Hey guys, mom from Family Reviews. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the transgender issues and how that's kind of played a role in this talk today. So I really wish that more people would be more transparent with what they've had to deal with with the transgender stuff. And I mean like the name change and things like that and what kind of paperwork you need for that. So Government of Canada, step it up because you guys do not give enough information online and it makes it much more difficult to just put it in once and get it done and over with. So as you guys know, I've put in a name change and a sex change for Jake. Um, we've decided to go with the female to an X instead of female to male for him um, just because that's more or less along the lines of what we talked about because Jake's too young he can't get the bottom surgery until he's 18 we have discussed with him that we would rather give him the x and then later on in life he can decide whether or not he wants to leave it as the x or he wants to put it fully to mail or what um this way sometimes I know that he feels more girly and sometimes he definitely feels like a full-on male um, he dresses and acts exactly like a male most of the time. Um, I love the fact that he still does cosplay, which is something that has not changed regardless of his gender formalities. Um, because this is some, that's an outlet that he absolutely loves. And I would never, ever take that away from him. Um. He's not really into a lot of sports. He wants to do sports, but right now in elementary school, because of the Ontario strikes of the schools, a lot of that stuff can't actually happen. A lot of the, a lot of the teachers right now have stopped doing the extracurricular activities. And in our small city, it has also come with an actual price tag, which is more than what I would ever be willing to pay for him to be involved in a sport. Um... I would rather have him enrolled in like a league or something where that he could do more than just play against other kids at other schools. So I'm excited for him to go into high school and for that to change and for him to be able to participate in that, which I know that he will. Um, what else can I say? The Lambton District School Board, I need you guys to get off your butts and put in gender-neutral bathrooms in every single elementary school. This is where we're lacking in Ontario, and I do not care what Doug Ford has to say about this, because I'm not asking him. I'm not changing his gender. This is for the safety of my son. Um, Jake is specifically told that he has to use the... Um, what was I trying to say? He's told that he has to use a staff bathroom because he's representing himself as a male but still has female body parts. Apparently that's very disruptive for other kids. Are you kidding me, guys? Get over yourselves. This is not confusing. The kids at the elementary school level get this a lot better than the adults do. And second of all, the bullying that actually occurs because Jake's transgender in his class and in his school is specifically involved with the parents of the students. To use religion as an excuse to promote hatred towards others that you do not understand is completely uncalled for and completely not allowed. It is harmful for any student who does not necessarily believe in the same crap the other kids do, that they are now thrown into this group of like, oh, we hate you because you don't believe in the same stuff. You don't believe in God. We don't like you. Ew, and then you say you're transgender. Oh my God, that's so hard. I don't get it. And I don't like you because I don't get it. Really? First of all, every single school district needs to get off their butts and create a safe place for kids that are lgbtq plus um group 
because these kids feel like they have to hide. They feel like they don't get support from their schools and from their parents. That is unhealthy and uncalled for, and that is something we need to change. That is something we have to put in the school systems, and we have to start having the teachers and the principals and the vice principals and the secretaries, that they may not have to be part of that community. They may not have to understand it, but they have to learn to accept it. They also have to learn to accept that they're here to stay and they're not leaving. So instead of showing hatred toward those people, maybe put them in a separate sex ed class, specifically for those that are gay. To know that it's okay to be loved by the same sex and to understand how their sexual being as a person will come into effect with someone else later on in life when they find a significant other. Right now, I find a lot of kids in elementary schools are questioning. A lot of them are questioning their sexuality. They don't understand the difference between um, how their bodies work and what that really means for that. And a lot of kids and even adults are very confused and simultaneously combined the fact that my gender and my sexual orientation are the exact same thing. They are not. Not even close. So in order for this to be more accepting of a community and not just like my little community, but like everyone else, especially across Canada, we need to put a stand up. We need to start telling parents, you may be religious, but you cannot let your child use their religion as an excuse to hate others that do not follow down the same path. It's actually the parents that have a problem with the issues than the child itself. The children are emulating their parents' own anguish and upset and inexperience and lack of knowledge that's allowing them to then hate my child for something that he cannot control. My child did not ask to be born in the wrong body. My child did not ask to be made fun of because of his decision to finally come forward, forward with it. It's not fair to say that your child has to wait until they're 18 in order for you as the parent to allow them to leave the house to then be okay with it. The younger the child actually transitions, the easier it is later on in life. Waiting until you're 18, when you've already had the mental health issues of dysphoria and feeling hatred from your family, your friends and stuff and feeling like you have to hide. Those are mental health issues that have been associated with being trans. Trans is not actually a mental issue, just so that we're all clear. It's the different parts of what makes you trans and your thought processes that are different that let you know that you have a mental health issue. So dysphoria, that's the hatred of your entire body or parts of your body that you don't like and that you want to change so that you can feel more like who you are. So for males that want to turn into females, as you transition, like that's a big awkward age, especially through puberty. Um... I don't know why it's more accepted, but for some reason it is for females to males. But for some reason, males to females are less accepted. Um, they're more ostracized. And now in the States, you're being told that you cannot get a job, um, even in the military, because it's a mental health issue. Your gender... And how you represent yourself has nothing to do with your mental state. You're not mentally insane. You're not crazy. You are born in the wrong body. And the majority of people need to learn to understand that. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about what's best for this person. This is what makes them happy. They feel much more accepted and beautiful 
and a lot of their anxiety and dysphoria and other mental health issues actually go away when they can become their true self. And so I really want people to understand that Putting hatred towards others when you don't understand it is not acceptable. I have a... I have a grandma who I love to pieces and she's one of the only ones that I actually get to see ever. And she is struggling the most with Jake becoming a male. And the thing is, it has nothing to do with Jake himself. It has nothing to do with um, the fact that she doesn't believe Jake. This has to do with her having her own personal issues. And I have a feeling that she's also using religion as an excuse to continue to provide hatred to my child. And, or lack of understanding. And the thing is, it has nothing to do with my grandmother. It's nothing to do with her upbringing or it has to do with a lack of upbringing or anything like that because I understand that transgender people have been around for thousands and I mean thousands of years we the transgenders have just hid in the shadows just like gay couples have hid for generations and transgenders are finally going you know what if the gays can come out and finally be accepted we are going to make a stand we are coming out and the thing is, it's not a lack of parenting skills, which I know a lot of older people think that it's us as parents that are the issue and that we're allowing this to occur. We didn't ask for our child to feel like they were born in the wrong body. We did not ask our bodies to give them the wrong body, like in the growth of it. I did not ask for my son's brain, who is a male, to then think that, oh, we're going to give you a female body just because. God created each and every single one of us and has told all of us in his scriptures that we need to love thy neighbor. Your neighbor is not necessarily the person who's right beside you. Love thy neighbor is your community. You need to learn to accept, to love everyone. God did not want us to hate anyone. He wanted to give us all the ability of free speech. He gave us the ability to all be different and to love different people. The people that ever had an issue with gays and les or the, yeah, gays and lesbians. I don't know why we can't just call them all gays, but sure. So because of the love for someone else or bisexuality, where you love multiple people, you're not necessarily falling in love with the person's personality or like their physical being. You're falling in love with who they are. You're falling in love with the connection you're making with their heart, their personality, the love you have for them and the love that they have for you in return. Now, sometimes that love can be as simple as family love. It can be the connection, the fact that we're family. I at first struggled with Jake being Jake. Um, it didn't take me long to decide I was freaking crazy. Um, but it was more the fact that I had these audacious plans for Jake. I'm the one who decided that he was going to grow up and get married, um, that I was going to see him walk down the aisle in the beautiful, gorgeous wedding dress. And I had that idea. Not Jake. Jake did not put that in my brain. I, as a mom, just was like, oh, yay, I have two girls. I'm going to be able to, like, watch my beautiful children walk down the aisle with their dad and it's going to be gorgeous, and it's going to be special, and it's going to be monumentous, and my kids are going to be able to have their own kids, which means I'm going to have amazing grandchildren, and all of this stuff was already in my brain since when the kids were, like, super duper tiny. Now, I literally cried for about four hours after Jake first gave me the letter. I never cried in front of him. I never gave him 
the part that it hurt me because I knew that it wasn't him. It wasn't him that was hurting me. It was my own internal issues in my brain telling me that this is wrong and that it's a problem and all these things. So I know that other parents of transgender kids or gay kids are going through these same things. Like we have an idea from when they were like super looper little, when they were just little tiny babies in our arms, holding them, caressing them, telling them how beautiful they were or how handsome they were. We already have that in our minds, but we as their parents and caregivers of these children need to let go. We need to learn to let go of these idolations that we put on our own selves of what's going to happen in the future for our children. Once I cried for those four hours after him telling me, I realized that the problem wasn't with him at all. It was me, my own personal feelings about the whole thing. And I was like, you know what? Why? Why? Why do I have these things? Like, why can you, you can still get married even if you're gay, he can still have the walking down the aisle marriage. He's just going to be in a tux. I think my son looks freaking absolutely dapper as hell in a tuxedo. I have no qualms about whether he ever wore a wedding dress or not. But in my mind, when he first told me, I was like, oh my God, my poor baby, I'm never going to see him walk down the aisle in a dress. (laughs) And I was like, wait a minute, that's me. That's my personal stuff that I have to deal with. So as another, as a parent to whoever's listening, I honestly hope that you realize that any issues you have with your child being gay or transgender or whatever, it's you. It's you that has the problem and not our children. You have the issue in your brain. So it's reprogramming our minds as to what the actual issue is. My issue was I had these expectations of what I envisioned for Jake. And it's not that he couldn't still have those things. He can still have children. He can still get married. He can still have an amazing life, whatever the hell that entails for his future career. I want to be there for all of those things. But the more I shut him out the more damage I was doing to our relationship, his and mine. And I had to realize that the ideas of what I thought were important to me were just superficial. He's still going to get married or have a lifelong partner. He's still going to be an absolutely amazing kid, regardless of what gender he is. He is still going to be able to have a super successful career whatever the heck that means. And if and when he chooses with his significant other to have children, that it can happen if that's what they want. I am not forcing my children to have kids, but I would like to be able to have grandchildren. I think that because I love children as a whole, that allowing my children the opportunity opportunities to have children whatever that may however that may happen I'm still going to accept them as my grandchildren no matter what Destiny has told me a long time ago that she doesn't want to have her own actual children out of herself she wants to adopt and I completely commend them or I completely commend her for that decision she may decide later on that she want would like to change that My only issue now is if Jake decides later on that he wants to adopt children with his partner, male or female, or another transgender person, I'm hoping that there's not going to be as much hatred in the world towards them as there are is now, that they will still be able to have children if they so choose to by adopting. So this is the only thing that I'm missing a piece of that puzzle for. Other than that, he can be exactly whoever the heck he wants to be. And I'm 100% supportive. As for my grandma who has the issue with Jake, do I think she'll come around? I don't know. 
I honestly have no idea if she will ever come around to Jake and who he really is. She misgenders him often. She has dead named him multiple times. Um, anytime I talk about Jake in the past, I refer to him as a as Jake, and I don't use his old name at all. Um, I will be happy when we change all of his ID to his actual name that he wants instead of the name that he was given at birth because he was able to pick it out. He helped pick out his first name. He helped to choose out his middle names. Um, for his girl middle names, we had named them after my grandfather or my father's grandmothers. Um, it was really special for me because my dad is actually my stepdad. Um, I don't really know my biological father very well, nor do I want to. Um, that's his decision, not mine. And so it was really important for me because he didn't have any children of his very own with my mom or anyone else that uh, I wanted to make sure that he felt he was important to me in my life. So I had given him, I had given Jake two female um, names from both of my stepdad or both of my dad's um, grandmothers. And so this time, because he's my husband's only child, um, we have decided to give him the names both of his middle names are from his dad's side, his grandparents' names. And so that was really special for us to be able to incorporate that in there. Um, and so Jake was very happy. We rearranged it so that it worked out the way he wanted it because he wanted his initials as JJ. Um, and so that's what he's getting is his first two names are both starting with a J. And so it does make it slightly confusing when I yell at him and I have to use all of his names um not that I get upset with him often but when I do he gets all four names and there was no way I was going to be able to go down to three names um and so we wanted to make sure we had his middle names were of an importance to us as a family and so that way he felt a bond with his dad a little bit more than what he already does so just know that supporting our trans children, regardless of how you feel as a person, is the absolute key to this whole thing. And people need to stop using their religious beliefs as a way to excuse them for not accepting others that they don't understand. So, Grandma, if you're listening, I absolutely love you and I respect your decision 100%. But... We will not be visiting very often um, because you're having such a hard time with accepting Jake as Jake. Um, the rest of the family has and I know that you're getting older and I would prefer not to spend a crap load of time not around you, but it's for Jake's sanity and as well as my own, for not getting upset with you for not accepting. When you're ready, if and when that happens, we are 100% here for you. Um, you don't have to accept it. You don't have to understand it. You just have to be willing to call him Jake, and you have to be willing to call him and use the proper pronouns. So him, he... Those are the pronouns that Jake prefers to have used. And whether or not you accept the fact that he's trans is irrelevant. You just need to accept him for being your grand, your great grandson. Um, and I would really like to have a relationship with you and you accept Jake. So I love you to pieces. Please learn to accept him for who he is. It doesn't matter whether you believe that this is a Christian thing or whatever it is that's holding you back, but it has nothing to do with you. This has to do with him and how he feels, and this is what makes him happy. Um, you remember Jake being super happy when he was like six, seven years old, um, but I knew as soon as he started hitting puberty and all of the female body parts came he 
absolutely hated it. And I would rather have my child not hurt himself. Um, what a lot of you may not know is that Jake did slice himself a couple times when he was younger um, that I didn't know about until later on in life. And I had to deal with enough of that with Destiny and I don't want to have to deal with that with Jake. Um, I'm not willing to put him in a mental hospital because transgender is not a mental health issue. The social anxieties that he has to face are enough for him to deal with. And if he goes into the mental hospital, it will be because of those people that are choosing to hate him for something he has no control over. And so I would like to have more support from family and friends. Um, most of our family and friends are absolutely amazing and have been very kind towards Jake. Um, so yeah, that's what I kind of wanted to get off my chest today. And I really hope that um, those of you that are struggling and that don't have the support can maybe show your family this video about the fact that it's them and not a you issue and all you need to do in order to deal as a parent with your child being transgender is getting over it. You just need to get over yourself. That has nothing to do with you. It's nothing that your child has done and this isn't a social issue where because people have come out as trans that you think that this is a weird phase. It's not a phase. For very few children, it is a phase. Um, but most kids that have expressed to you, even at a young age, the fact that they're in the wrong body, accept it. Do it behind closed doors if you have to, but just accept your child. It's nothing, has nothing to do with the fact that you were a sucky parent and you didn't raise your child right. It's got nothing to do with that. And all your child needs is your love and unconditional support. You told your child ever since they were little that you would love them unconditionally no matter what they chose to do with the rest of their life. This just happens to be part of it for the trans kids. So accept it and realize that it's an issue with you and your mental state than it is your actual child. And just know that as a transgender ally, that as a mom, I love you no matter who you are, no matter what you're going through, I am here for you. And just know that there are thousands upon thousands of other supportive parents of transgender kids that will love you just as you should be and just as you are. So please know that every single person is loved and accepted no matter what. And that there's no issues with that with me at all. So if you don't have that support, just know that I am here for you. And if there's anything else that you would like to talk to in regards to mental health issues that Destiny has gone through and transgender issues, whether you're not your trans yourself or you're just needing some extra support with how to deal with this because you recently found out about it, please don't hesitate to comment below and let me know. Um, and I can talk about those issues and I can let you know a little bit more about what I know. Um, it is very different from in the States to Canada, but just know that if you're relatively close, I'm here for you, especially if you have a younger child. Um, it's not easy to go through and I've got your back. Okay, bye guys.